finding a function when we are given its derivative is to say that we are looking for an antiderivative. So we call a function capital F an antiderivative of little f on the interval i if the derivative of capital F at x is equal to little f at x for all x in i. In general, we say that the indefinite integral of little f is all functions of the form capital F plus c, where capital F is an antiderivative of little f, and c can be an arbitrary constant that we call the constant of integration. Here's the notation that we use to write um, indefinite integrals. We read this as the integral of f of x dx, and this would be the indefinite integral of little f with respect to x, um, are all functions of the form capital F of x plus c, because if we differentiate capital F of x plus c with respect to x, we always get little f of x. Here is an example, the indefinite integral of x squared with respect to x, so the integral x squared dx is x cubed over 3 plus c, because if we differentiate x cubed over 3 plus c using the power rule, we always end up with x squared. Here are some integral formulas. So the indefinite integral of the sum of two functions is the sum of the indefinite integrals of those functions. And the indefinite integral of any constant multiple of a function is that constant multiple of the indefinite integral of the function. We already have some basic integrals from the basic derivatives that we had. So the indefinite integral of any constant with respect to x is that constant times x plus c. The indefinite integral of e to the x with respect to x is e to the x plus c. And the indefinite integral of the cosine of x with respect to x is the sine of x plus c. You can check all three of these formulas by simply differentiating the right hand side and seeing that you indeed get what's after the integral sign in each case. Finally, from the power rule in differentiation, we get the power rule for integration, namely for any integer n that is not equal to negative 1 we get the indefinite integral of x to the n with respect to x being x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c, which you can check by differentiating x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c with respect to x and indeed obtaining x to the n. Okay, this is enough for now. Let's solve some problems involving antiderivatives. Select all antiderivatives of the function little f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 5. Pause the video and make your selection now. I hope you paused it and have selected these two functions so we can check whether f of x is an antiderivative of little f or not by differentiating it and seeing if we get little f. So as for the first function, when we differentiate it using the rules of differentiation, we get 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 5, and that is not equal to little f of x. So this capital F is not an antiderivative of little f. As for the second function, when we differentiate that using the rules of differentiation, we get 3x squared over 3, so that is x squared minus 2x plus 5, and that is indeed equal to little f of x. So this function, capital F, is an antiderivative of our little f. As for the third function, when we differentiate that capital F, we get again 3 times x squared over 3, so that's x squared. Then we get minus 4x plus 5, and that is not equal to little f of x, hence this is not an antiderivative. As for the last function, capital F, that we are given, its derivative reads 3 times x squared over 3, so that's x squared minus 2x plus 5, plus the derivative of this constant that is added, 5, its derivative is 0, so uh, we still get little f of x, so that was a constant of integration and we still have this function be an antiderivative of our function little f. Okay, let's look at the next question. Select all antiderivatives of little f of x equals the sine of 2x. So pause the video and select your answers now. I hope you paused it and have found that these two functions are antiderivatives of the sine of 2x. Again, we can check one by one whether or not f of x is an antiderivative by differentiating it and seeing if we get little f. Of x. So the derivative of the cosine of 2x by the chain rule and basic derivatives is negative uh, 2 times the sine of 2x and this is not equal to little f of x hence this capital F is not an antiderivative of that function little f. As for the second function the sine of 3x 
its derivative is 3 times the cosine of 3x, again not equal to little f of x as given. The derivative of the sine squared of x with respect to x using the chain rule and basic derivatives will, be, will give us 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x which by the double angle formula for the sine is equal to the sine of 2x for all x therefore this is equal to little f of x. Um, hence this is an antiderivative of the sine of 2x as for the last function capital F uh, we differentiate it the constant differentiates to zero we have the negative of cosine when that's differentiated we get the sine of 2x the, the derivative of the inner function is 2 so that multiple of 2 is being cancelled by the denominator um, there and we get the sine of 2x which is indeed little f of x okay I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.